Hey guys, this is Theta. I'm doing another tutorial trying to start my series back up because a lot of stuff happened involving breaking two computers, but I should be good now. Um, means I can start doing stuff. So, this is the tutorial I've wanted to do for a long time, like most of the other ones, and it basically involves learning how to use materials and shaders, and they're not that complicated, to be honest, but um, a lot of the terms and stuff, like this stuff here, and you know, whatever, is, um, it, it can get confusing. So I'd like to just go ahead and, you know, start off. Try to do each thing one at a time. So, I'm going to do some basics today. Um, if you don't understand everything inside of here, or I get something wrong, please forgive me. This is just to the best of my understanding. Most stuff I have listed here usually ends up right um, in some way or form. So, you know, get started. Let's start between the differences in a character and stage shader, and material, obviously. So when you import something, if you've ever imported something into Brawlbox, you'll know that um, there's always a little option that says like, um, is this a character model or a stage model? And um, I don't update update it anymore unless I'm doing a character one because um, then it just adds something to the shader. So I'm gonna go over materials first though because it's a lot easier. Um, the way I look at it is, uh, let's say you have two Photoshop layers, right? Or any you know GIMP, whatever program you want to use. Uh, shaders basically tell each layer how they multiply together. So, um, if you open the stages here, you will say like, um, you know, let's say this wasn't this was one texture, this is one texture, this is one texture. Or sometimes they can just be colors. Like these two ones usually just are for colors, which are like um, if you ever dodged in game, you know how when you go helpless or if you flash white. That's what these two extra stages here do, and that's what gets uh, that's one of the things that gets added when you turn your model uh, into a character when you import it. Um, but to start with materials, I'm going to go over all the settings that I, I can know. Um, just the basic stuff for now at least. I'll get into transparency, reflection, stuff like that later. Um, but uh, to start off, we have two light channels. And these are important things. Uh, light channel 1 is hardly ever going to be used, um, so i just go ahead and use light channel 0. Um, sometimes you'll see like uh, stuff here that tells you some information. Um, Let's call it in. Uh, Blackjacks is adding that, he told me, uh, as time goes on. So, uh, this will be a lot more basic than that, though, because uh, those terms are more to understand on a deeper level. This is just to understand what they do and how you can use them uh, to start off. So, the ambient color, I honestly think, should stay at this at all times, unless you're doing some flat shading like Mr. Game & Watch or something, but even then, you can achieve that um, without editing this. You can just use it with a different way. So let's um, let's see how this works. So when we have a character shader or a material and they are getting lighting, so this is light channel zero. This is the lighting that the character will get mainly. Um, you can use these for lighting too or even if you look at the model there's a color folder in here. Uh, this is what the vertex color leads to. So when you import stuff there's an option that says um, make a new color node and this is what this one does. Um, you usually want to set inside here. I'm going to get to the vertex color later. Let's just go over the basics here for a second. So, light channel zero. This is Charizard's from default brawl, his uh, material here. So, if I open up this, it tells me this light channel is being used, uh, which it usually is. This one's not being used, see, because uh, it's false here. Um, I'm now using Brawlbox 0.75b. It is good for, it's pretty stable now, actually. Um, I was using 0.71 for a while, but uh, this one's pretty stable for stuff besides vertex coloring um, for complicated stuff like um, when 3.6 comes out project M you'll see my uh, Delfino secret stage that it has a lot of vertex coloring and so I'll get to that once uh, 3.6 is out so I can do more complicated uh, shading tutorials but for now when you're looking at material color um, and ambient color this is the kind of lighting that the uh, model will receive so when you have it set to true here this basically says that um, it's going to get lighting from the, uh, if you ever open a stage up, I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, no backgrounds, mesh bros. Okay, 
Okay, so let's say in this battlefield stage, I'm gonna go to open the second arc here, and then you see scene data here. This is the lighting that the stage gets. Um, and so we have light sets. Basically, um, when you're looking at character stuff, it's actually useful too. So, uh, if it is getting its material source from the vertex, right, then it means that this, see this uh, material color here? It, the model is either going to get this value as lighting, and if it is going to get this value, you're going to want to set it to 255, uh, excuse me, 128 for everything except for the alpha because that's the actual value it should be set at. But you can see here it's set to vertex, right? So let's see what that means. If I open up the vertex color here, it will say uh, 255, 128, 128, 128. And so you can see in here it does that. And that's because um, vertex color can be useful in this, like in this instance, if I wanted to set all these materials besides these ones. Uh, when you see EXT MTL, that means it is a metal material um, and um, I usually just delete them and then re reapply them by doing turning this to true after I finish doing the model. Um, but so yeah, vertex coloring is given here by this, and so if I set all of these to be using the vertex coloring, whenever I change this value here, it would change the overall lighting that all the models using vertex coloring were going to receive. There are the other examples though. Um, so if you wanted to make a new light uh, asset, you can go new asset colors or import asset colors, or sometimes when you import models that have vertex coloring, which I'll get into later as I said before, um, they'll have more than one vertex color node. But since they're all using that one and it only has one, I mean you can make one that just has one too, that's what it usually is when you make them, um, they're going to use that color. However, um, if you want to be more basic, you can just set color to use uh, register instead, and then it will use this value here. Um, that's what most people do. Um, U2 2000 highly advises that for beginners. Um, so let's say uh, now in the enabled thing here, if I'm going to set this to true, this means that it is going to get stage lighting, as I said here. So now uh, that points over, so you can see this light set index and fog index. And the, what this means is in the stage lighting here, if we see this light set zero, its ID is zero here. However, we go over to 20, which 20 is always the character lighting on any stage. So it'll say CHR, and then you can see its ID is 20, which means any models using this number will use this light set. And this light set tells it what lights the stage has that it's going to use. So you can see the ambient light is set to CHR. Light zero is program. Light one and two are CHR and CHR2. So now you can see in here, ambient light, there's a character one. And then the lights, it has the same lights, um, program, character, and character two that are used here. And then you can see the fog index over here in the character's uh, model, material, it's going to use four. So if I close all these folders and go to the fogs, there is a fog with an ID four set to character. And so that's what these two numbers means. Um, if you're doing a stage, this is the difference between characters and stages. Um, these will book both going to use 0 instead of 20 and 4. Um, if you don't want your character's model to use any lighting whatsoever, so let's say it was like a glowing orb of fire that you didn't ever want to have like, you know, a shaded difference on it like shadows or something like that. Or you wanted it to be like Mr. Game & Watch where it, again, um, like let's say you have a round ball. Uh, well, I might paint or something here. <sighs> Okay, clip story paint. Not what I was looking for, but whatever, it's, it works the same. Okay, so in here, let's say I have. Use my mouse and you draw crappy, it doesn't matter. You. Thank you. Okay, so let's say you have a ball here, right? And you set the character lighting. Um, you set, like, excuse me. You set this. Uh, fuck. <laughs> you set the lighting enabled in here to true. That means it's going to receive the lighting from that stage's scene data, which means that it's going to have, like, you know, on the lower part of it, you know, like when stuff is like darker or whatever, and it's shaded, and it looks like a sphere that is, you know, in the third dimension and stuff. Um, so let's say you had the same sphere, and that option was set to false, right? That means it's only going to receive the data for lighting from either here if you set it to register, or in uh, here if you set it to vertex instead. Which means that if it's 255, it means it's full bright, it means it's never going to be darker than completely full bright. However, again, I'd say set it to 128 if you're going to use 
uh, register data. Um, but it's never going to receive shadows or like highlights. So I can here, let's say, let's say the light was coming from this way, right? That means that it's going to be brighter here and darker here because there's no lighting receiving it. It's not being shadows, but because Brawl doesn't use shading besides uh, their fake shadows for stages. Um, but it's going to be darker on the parts where light is not hitting it as much. Um, so now if I go ahead and close that. All right, so now let's see how to choose what vertex color something's going to be using. So if there's multiple ones, and there's most likely not going to be multiple ones right now, this is in case you want to make new ones and set them to them. Um, and you can see here in the uh, vertex color, it was going to show you which objects are using this. So all of the normal ones are going to be doing that. Um, but so now in the objects folder here, these are all the different parts of Charizard. And this is the object. You can see their actual ID right here. Um, these polygons here, that's just the name of it. You can name it whatever you want when you import them. Um, so you can see here in the color node zero, it is set to this. It's set to Pokey Lizardon, body M, fit Pokey Lizardon zero zero, body M1. So that's the only color here. Um, but if I wanted to, let's say, add a new asset, colors, this is color set one. And let's say I wanted there to only be red shading on uh, Charizard. So now he's going to be a lot redder and a lot brighter because this is a lot brighter than uh, halfway. Um, so what I do now here is this would be set to this, and I can just change this to colors at one. Um, it's not going to let me because it's not the right type of uh, shading. This is something, again, uh, vertex coloring is one thing I'd do inside of 0 0.71 rather than 0 0.75b. Um, but in the case that you wanted to use this color set, that's what you do. You change that to that. So now, moving on from that to color the, the rest of the settings here. Um, so... <laughs> If you're going to use, so yeah, that's actually it. So um, we know now what all of this stuff does for the light channel. And let's go on to uh, settings down here. So compare before texture is basically going to like, you know, test how something is close to the camera. So um, basically though, if you want to have something transparent, just leave that to um, all false if it's transparent. Um, the depth test basically is, you know, it tests if stuff is closer. So you can see here, lesser equal means that there's, if there's another object on the camera, right? So if I have something behind it or in front of it, it's going to see stuff that's behind it and the, it's going to appear in front of them, obviously. So if I set this to greater or equal, that means that anything greater or equal will, be here, will appear behind it. And so it's kind of like the opposite of what you'd think. So if you say greater, right, if you put greater here, then you'd see every object in the camera as in front of it, it would actually put it behind it when it's being drawn by the uh, game. So you want to have this to less or equal normally, unless you're doing some really advanced stuff. Um, and this enable depth update is also really useful. So let's say I had something transparent, like um, let's say I was doing the, the wireframes from Melee, right? Um, wireframes are transparent, so you can see through them. However, so when you have like, and then someone who you can see through, right? You know how you can see objects behind them. Um, if you set this to false, that's what makes it so you can see stuff behind this model. Um, if you saw, let's say I set it to true, even where the model was invisible and you could like see through it and see the stage and stuff, characters and like effects like fire and stuff like that would be hidden by the model. Um, so that's what this setting does. So let's say you wanted someone to be invisible but still hide stuff behind them, like the invisible mode in uh, Brawl, in Special Versus. Uh, that's what that's set to true for. Um, so if you go inside Brawl and actually look at invisible models, they still actually you know hide stuff behind them. That's what this setting does. Um, going to these color blocks and constant blocks, these are used by the shader, so I'll get back to them, back to them in a little bit. Um, you usually don't have to edit them though, unless you're doing a lot of again complicated stuff like having uh, reflections that are black and white, uh, but still use color based on these. Um, however, this setting and this setting can both get values from the game and from color animations, um, as well as the light channel. So be wary of that. Um, so indirect texturing. This is for when stuff is warped behind a certain texture or camera. So again, going back to, let's say, a water texture, like Squirtle's water or invisible models like that. This is how indirect textures work like this. I, I have not even edited these because I've not needed to make a indirect texture. 
Um, I was fooling around with it a little bit for my Shadow Mario, but um, it's not stuff you need to edit right now. Uh, okay, this is trying to stick to basics, but it's still going to be a long tutorial, but I'll get into an even longer one <laughs> when I end up doing that. Constant alpha is a pretty basic setting. If you know what you're doing, you don't need to use this, and I'd, hire, I'd recommend against it. I've never needed to use it um, in all the years I've done shader stuff, even though it's been two. Um, I still consider it in, not a non-useful option, but it's one that's really, it's just extra. Um, so if you set this to true, what it will do is if you set this value to anything, it will overwrite everything else and set it to always be that transparent. This can cause problems again for hiding stuff behind you and stuff like that. It's just a hassle. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so now let's get into a thing really quickly here about why uh, textures that are opaque. Um, and this is actually important here. Uh, so now let's go into opacity versus um, exclusive or transparent materials. Um, you see the setting here, this is set to true on everything that you ever find transparent, or it should be set to that. And what this basically does, um, what you're going to use it for is if something is transparent. So let's say, and this is, by transparent there's a difference here, okay? So actually I will go into, um, uh, I can't think of a good example for this actually. Um, yeah, here, I can actually, I actually can. So in here, smash. And so, basically, opacity is, I can't actually, I can't actually record that uh, fast enough, so, excuse me. Um, opacity is when something, there we go. Okay, so, opacity is, let's say you have a square, right? And so, the edges of this are very solid, and they will not, you know, they're not, they don't blend together, um, as to say, if I were to use a brush, something like this. So you can see here, the end of this is partially, see how it fades out? That is the difference between opaque and uh, transparent. So if I use something solid here, you can see the difference in these two pen tips, right? Uh, how the end, this one ends in a very hard line, and this one ends in a very uh, soft fade out line. That is the difference. Um, so that is to say, if you have something that you are going to use, like um, let's say you had a PNG image, right? Um, and you, it's all of its edges were going to use, use something that wasn't half transparent. Like, so it wasn't going to have like, oh, it's water. So you can see it itself, but you can still see through it. That's something that you'd need to set to transparent or XLU. Um, and a good setting I usually like to have with that is setting it so that enable blend is enabled for textures and stuff. So if, let's say you have, I'll make a new, a new thing here. This is actually working. Okay, so in here, I have a little thing like this. Um, let me close paint actually now. Save. So let's say I set this to be completely filled with, well, like red, my main color. So it's completely filled to be red, okay? So this is something I could make not transparent or opaque because it does not have any partial transparency. However, now, if I set it to, let's say, 50% brightness, so you can see how you can see the checker pattern behind it, but you can still see that tint of red, which means it's still there. If that is something you need to be transparent. Um, however, since all the edges of this are, in fact, hard, and you don't need to, um, there's no, you know, partially transparent ends inside of the texture itself, you do not need to have enable blend on. Um, so, let's say I go ahead and erase part of this here. Um, and I'll set this back to fully transparent. So if I erase something here, you can see that this edge here um, stops, like kind of stops, and it's very soft, and that is what I would use for, Enable Blend for. That enables this to look, you know, partially transparent. Um, and Enable Blend always needs to be used with XLU material, because if you don't, then uh, it will hide stuff in that partially transparent area behind it. Um, which means, like, um, so everything behind this will be hidden like normal, and every, it will be it will continue. Excuse me, it will continue to be hidden like this until there's nothing left. So let's say you had a green object right behind it. Yeah, so just a green, make a new layer. Let's say you had something that was green, right? Um, this is what it would look like with enable blend on. And if I delete this, excuse me. Um, 
one. Um, this is what it'll look like with Enable Blend off. And so now you can see that, let's say the red thing goes up to right about here, right? The green is still being hidden until there's absolutely no red left. That is what Enable Blend does. It enables the blending or you know semi-transparency on the edges of textures to not hide stuff. And it's pretty useful. Now, if you don't set Enable Blend on in the first place, what it's going to do is it's going to take this tra semi-transparent texture, right? And um, what it's going to do that is it's going to make it so that it looks like that instead. Excuse me. There we go. So it's going to make it so that it looks very hard on the edge instead. And if you're going to use edges that are hard like this, so let's say you had an image that was, uh, I should be saying this to pencil, so you can see. Okay, so let's say, see how that, that is a hard edge, excuse me. That is exactly what a hard edge looks like. Um, that's what setting it to an OPA material and having enable blend off will do. Um, so this allows you to put PNGs and stuff into stages and not have them be XLU materials because XLU will make your game lag a little bit actually. Um, not significantly, but I'm saying compared to OPA materials because what it does is the only real difference in coding that XLU and um, OPA materials do is that XLU materials are drawn after any OPA material, which means that it can allow them to tra like you know properly blend together. Um, now then, let's get on to some texture related stuff here. Um, this is important for reflections and stuff, so I'll get into that now. What texture matrix, the first thing here does is, um, well, I'm going to say what it does is what you need to use it for. Um, if you have something that's going to follow the camera, so a reflection is going to be pretty much your main example of that. Um, and it's on a model or object in here where you can see the single bind is set to none. Um, this needs to be set to go this needs to be set to true if you want this texture to follow the camera um if it if it is single bound like um let's say these eyes are single bound to head n then it does not matter if it is if the texture matrix is true or not in fact you cannot set it to true um and so that's what that does it's just basically you need to set that to true if you have something that's rigged and isn't single bound that you want to follow the camera um, there's more to following the camera than obviously that one setting. Um, texture is just what texture the material is going to use. It can use multiple textures if there are more references here. Um, that's what like reflections are used for. Um, and inside materials, you want to have them appear in the way that they're going to be drawn. So you can see here now, um, in here the eyelid zero, which means that this is the eyelid or whatever of Charizard. You can see how his the bottom of his eye is, you know the last thing to appear inside this material, which means this one in the shader is probably going to be drawn first. This one's going to be drawn on top of it. The same thing with this uh, reflection for his eye. And the eyelid is going to be drawn on top. So usually you have, for example, your texture, your reflection, or if you're using a specular map, um, your texture, your specular map, and then your reflection is how you'd want to layer them inside of this material. So let's say that what this palette thing here does is um, if your texture is set to a color coded uh, format, so like C18. You can see that makes it jump in size a lot. Um, but it's pretty still useful for quality standards compared to size. So if it's using C18 or C14, right? To get that to appear correctly in game, you need to set this palette to the same texture. Um, if it's not, you can just, uh, if it's not C18, then you can set it to um, nothing, and you need to, unless it is C18 or C14. Um, that is a very big must. You need to do that if it's a um, color-coded texture. Now, scale is pretty simple. If I set this to larger, right? So let's say I set the scale to 2. It means that this texture here on this UV map, which the UV map is what the object uses to map out its textures, this will be layered twice. If I set um, the second one to 2, then it means that is the vertical scaling. So it means that be, you'll see this texture twice um, within this area. So like, let's say um, where this wing is here, the whole texture would be repeated. So about halfway through, this is where the wing would be once, and then you'd see the whole thing start over again and it'd be there twice. Um, so if I set the same thing for the first one, it'd do the same thing horizontally. Um, so setting it to bigger numbers makes your texture bigger on this UV map. Setting it to larger numbers makes it smaller on this UV map. Um, I would not recommend 
setting it to different numbers if you're using a UV map for your model, because that's the whole fucking reason you have it like that. <laughs> um, rotation will, will turn the um, texture on its main axis right here. Um, I never use it, don't use it, it's not useful. <laughs> um, I really can, honestly can't tell you anything about about rotation. Um, I don't. It, it's never really proven useful. Um, you can just do it manually if you want to, rot you know, rotate textures. Translation is how much it's going to move. So if I set this to the zero to a one instead, now this would not look anything different because it would have, you know, rotated once entirely or translated once entirely. So for example, uh, in the game, when you see these options here that say repeat, it means that on the edge of this UV map. If this UV map goes over where the texture is, it means that the texture itself will repeat itself here, 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 all, every single direction outward. Um, so you can see that if you use translation 0 0.5 and it, this is set to repeat, that means that right here it's going to be half of where the texture starts. So this stomach will be in the middle of it, and um, but then the but this this side will transfer over and eventually be in the middle because you know it's it's going once this way. Um, the map mode, this is how the map, you know, it tells itself where it is based on your camera. So if you set it to text cord, that means it is using this uh, coordinate here, which means it's going to use the UV map 0, which is this UV map for the model. Um, I, I would highly recommend to always set the text cord uh, number to match up with your number of texture inside of here. So let's say the first texture, you can see it here. Um, this is text cord 0, this one's text cord 1, text cord 2, and this one's set to geometry, which is different. Um, I'm going to get into that, but you can see that first one is 0, second one's 1, third one's 2. Um, always do that if you're having multiple ones. Um, now then, uh, if it is set to something besides text cord here, such as ENV camera, projection, ENV light, or ENV spec, um, ENV camera, will make it so it follows the camera no matter what. So if you're looking at it, it will face towards you. This is how reflections look like they are actually reflecting stuff. In reality, they're just an image following the camera. Now on to the next thing, projection. This projects something f uh, onto the model in a way where it looks like it is flat to your eye. So let's see, on Charizard, if I reflect, if I had the image of um, the Smash logo, if I set it to text court, it would be like, you know, stretched around his model. Or if I set it to projection, then it would look like it was flat, like just put directly straight onto his model, and it looks like it would flat to my eye, even though it wouldn't make sense in 3D. Um, if I set to ENV light, then you need to set these settings to reference a light over here, once again, because it's going to follow where a light is uh, reflecting. Um, same thing for specular. Um, specular maps are usually done using this option, and they usually set to uh, the same numbers that characters would use. Or, and sometimes it comes to custom stuff like uh, negative one and four, stuff like that. Um, for basic stuff, this is how your texture is going to look if it's just a static texture on a UV map. Um, so UV map modes, we can see mirror and uh, what, what basically, okay, so I'll go through each one. Clamp makes it so that on the very edge of this UV map, so let's say this orange pixel here is the edge of it, right? If something goes beyond this, it's all going to look orange beyond this way outward. Same thing with this tan, it's going this way outward, and same thing on the top too. So this darkness is going to go, it's going to go up forever. It's, it's never going to repeat this texture again. The edges of it will look um, like that, and uh, it's useful for stuff that you don't want repeating because it doesn't go over the UV map. Um, but repeat's a pretty safe option too. Mirror, what mirror does is that this is going to basically picture this as an axis right here. This texture is going to flip uh, on this axis beyond this square here so that it will mirror itself. So instead of being, you know, a repeating thing that's always oriented the same way, it's going to flip flop back and forth. Um, so that's what those settings do. This is for map settings. It's again, that's an advanced thing. I'm going to get into that later. This is all not unique. So this is, this is where we get to important stuff here again. So these two options here are just mapping options and there's only difference between them is if you have a static texture or something following the camera again, or following something. Um, if you want to have it following something, you'll usually want to set this to SDQ and this to ABC1. Um, so that's what those two things are for. Um, this is a static texture, so it doesn't need that. 
Um, the type you'd want to do, always set this to regular, embossed maps and stuff are more complicated, so I'll get into those later. Then uh, text chord zero. This is, again, if you want to have something following the camera, uh, this, this will tell it how it's mapped out. So if something's following the camera, it's obviously not going to use a UV map anymore, because that would stretch it weird, right? So we'd want to set this to, normally it's set to normals, and I would recommend setting it to normals if you're using it for something that follows the camera. Um, and so, normalize, what this does is, it, this basically makes it so that the scale settings here are nullified, so that the maximum of where the object is, and it's hard to explain, it basically makes it so it scales it correctly based on the object. So if this is following, let's say this uh, this texture wanted to follow the camera, right? This is, I'm going to set this up so that we'd see the settings we want to use. Um, camera, and then so, this is what the settings would look like in this material if this wanted to be following the camera, this texture here. Um, this is the safest option, or at least the, if they look the best. Um, so now if I actually ref refresh this, you will see that it's not set to a UV map anymore because it's not using that texture chord zero. And so I'll set it back to what it was. Um, to get back on track, let's go to shaders next. Um, let me see, set this back on. You can also use the up and down arrows to change options in here, which is pretty useful. All right, so now this uses shader zero. So let's go to shader zero. Um, this is a difference again if you see a stage shader versus a um, character shader. Is that uh, excuse me? Stage one and stage two will have these settings. Um, so go and sit, you know you can pause the video to look at what these say if you really want to. Um, they're just making it so that the uh, you know color overlays from character models like the flashing when you're helpless in the air or uh, the white flash when you do an L cancel on Project M. That's what these two uh, stages are for. Uh, stage zero is what uses is the texture itself. So now let's get over what all this stuff means um, or how to use it. Uh, so this is for indirect textures. Don't use this ever right now. I'll get into that later. Uh, this again, this is just for shading purposes. It's not useful right now. This is the main thing you want to focus on. So um, stuff, let's say that this body material uses shader zero, which it does. Um, it only has one texture, so inside the shader here you can see texture reference zero is set to true, which means that the first texture, since there's only one, is being used. So now, if you go into stage zero, you see that case of zero, value, and alpha are chosen. Now what that means is, back in the material here, um, this, this value is being used for um, a certain value. So let's say I set color selection D, and I'll get what color selection means in a bit. Um, let's say I set this to constant color selection. Uh, it would use this value here. So that's what this sets it to do. Um, getting to the important stuff here, uh, texture map ID is the texture that this is going to use. Text map is just literally which one of these textures is going to use. So again, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And it can continue on to a maximum of 8. So in the shader, this is going to use the first texture and any material that references this shader. The texture coordinate it's going to use should be matched with this, unless you're doing advanced UV mapping stuff. Um, so I'll just set this to the same thing as text map. Um, if it's using a texture, which it obviously is, we set this to true, and color channel is color channel zero, which means that the color channel being referenced is this one. Uh, so now back in the shader here. Um, you can set this to stuff like fall, you can look at these options, um, zero, you know, it's useful for if you're not using a color uh, shader. I always just set it to that because it's safe if it's going to use stuff. Um, so now, huh. this is an equation that all uh, shaders use to determine how the stuff is drawn in game. So you can see this is basically what what's usually done is this this little these settings here. This is for a basic texture. Um, so this makes it, it's not reflective. It's it's just flat. It's uh, that's how it will appear in game. So this does this says oh hey this is the texture color. So all the different colors that appear. Um, on here, in this little, like, you know, in the texture itself, this is what will be shown on the model. Uh, it's going to times that by the raster color, 
which um, the raster in here is set to color channel zero, which means that the, the color of like you know the brightness and colors of the texture onto the model are going to be multiplied by whatever is set here. So in this case, it's going to be multiplied by the vertex color, which is 128, 128, 128. Um, if it was revert, uh, referencing the register, we'd want to set this to 128, 128, 128, and the alpha would always say 225, 255, excuse me. Um, so that's basically what that does, and that's how uh, changing that setting will be affected. So if I had that material that had this at whatever number this was, but I only set it only set it to use the texture color, then it would um, only ever show up as a texture. It would look pretty flat. Um, it wouldn't be shaded. Um, and since it is using 128, 128, 128, like most models should, it's going to be multiplied by 4. Um, whereas if you accidentally or for some reason really wanted to set this to be using uh, 255, that's when you'd want to set this to multiply by 2. Um, but that would make the texture look not as colorful, and so that's why multiply by 4 is really useful, because it brings out color and stuff. Um, and this is obviously, again, the same settings. So, now let's say um, color section A and D, again, you can see, you basically just read how this equation works, and this is how it's done. So, for example, let's say I had um, colors C and B, um, and I had two textures. Um, basically, this makes it so that if this is both, this is what to like, um, it's an advanced thing, actually, I'll get to that later. But read this equation, figure out how it works, um, and then set these two things that you can try to mess around with. So messing around with stuff will really help you. There's lots of settings you can set it to here. Um, color 0, color 1, color 2, and alpha 0, 1, 2. Um, that, will, that will use this color uh, block inside here to give it constant colors. Uh, however, this can get uh, stuff from the game too, so it will look weird if you try to use that sometimes. It's really situational, uh, to be honest. Um, I usually just sit to stuff like this, and then if I need custom coloring, I use ver vertex color, or if there's only one custom color I need, I'll use the register color. Um, so, uh, this is what the things will look like. Now, for same thing for texture alpha, uh, raster alpha is used like that as well. Um, and so that's for basic settings. Uh, sorry, sorry, I didn't get to the shaders very much this time. I just wanted to show basically, you know, what you'd need to do for a basic texture to look normal. These are the settings you want to use. Uh, and again, if they're a character one, you'd add this afterward. So, to also get back to that, the only difference between a shader for, and you know, materials and shaders for characters and uh, stages uh, is mainly that characters use 20 and 4, while stages use 0, 0 for both these settings. And then character shaders have these extra two stages, which allows it to get lighting um, from the game for dodging and other uh, flash-related stuff. So um, I hope that was useful for you guys. Um, I'm going to get into a more detailed tutorial soon, um, but that should teach you at least some information about how materials work and uh, how to get shaders to not be stupid for basic stuff. So hope you enjoyed. Hope it wasn't pretty bad. I'm pretty tired right now, but I'm going to try to record some more stuff um, when I'm more awake, so I can probably do some more informative tutorials. But I hope that this one was useful. Thanks.